what's up my fellow developers welcome back to another video so our first foray into o3d so for a lot of you this should become familiar because it resembles uh lumberyard as lumberyard as you learned before was the foundation for the beginning of this new engine there's definitely some changes we have uh, different toolbars uh, we have different icons uh, but for the most part like the outliner the asset browser the entity inspector those remain the same now there are a few ways that you can actually open up the editor so uh, there's three that I'm going to go over so as you can see up here under tools we have the material editor as the last option and that will open up the editor by itself uh, at its default settings you also have that same icon in the toolbar up here for easy access also when you have a entity inside of the viewport uh, as we do here if we pull this drop down and go to our shader ball you can see that when you add a mesh component you are given the option to add a material component now when we click this it's going to automatically add a material component for us now the models that you have they're going to have certain data that allows the engine to pick up if they have material um, already built in or at least slots that you can build in so if you have a character it's going to give you material slots for like the head, the, the armor, the skin, all those types of things. So since we just have the shader ball, you're going to see under the model materials, we have shader ball. All right. So we want to generate manage source materials. Do that. And it's going to create a material for us. And it's going to place it within this uh, area here. We hit OK. And now we have that. So from here, there's a few ways you can go about it, but to easily open the editor with this material that we just created, we want to hit this drop down here and we're given a few options. Um, say if you're working on an instance of a material, we can get into that later, but for now we're going to order, uh, edit the source material. All right. Now when it opens up, you're going to see, uh, usually going to see this, you're going to see the inspector, which is going to give you different fields for your base color, your metallic, your roughness, your asset browser so that you can easily swap out. Uh, editing materials um, you're gonna have your your preview of the material here um, so yeah let's go over a few of the things in the editor before we actually set up our material so we have our usual you know uh, file edit view help toolbar at the top uh, below that we have where we can uh, enable the grid so we can take that off uh, also shadows here you can see you can disable shadows or enable them uh, we have our shader ball uh, which we can change to into different objects. We'll actually dive into this a little bit more in, the, in a second. Uh, so if you want to change it to a cone, if you change to a cone, uh, shader ball is kind of the standard uh, these days. It used to be a square, and then some programs used a spear. But the shader ball is actually uh, pretty cool. And then you have the IBL lighting model that you want to use, uh, which is image-based image lighting. So we can go to the artist workshop. We can go to the, the Blau River. Um, in different options, you can actually add more options if you want as well. All right, so uh, for our editor, if you go to view, we have our asset browser, which is already enabled. We also have our inspector, which is already enabled. Um, we don't have access to our console right now, but if we wanted to, we can access our Python terminal where you can actually run Python scripts and import settings uh, through Python, other things that deal with shaders and things like that. Uh, we have our performance monitor as well. So that's going to give you your frame rate and seeing how the the material that you're working with is affecting your uh, GPU and your CPU. And we also have our viewport settings, which is going to be something we want to go over. So uh, this is what your material editor is going to look like. You have everything enabled that you want to adjust and, and change for your given project. So we have our same settings. So our grid, our shadow catcher, you can enable an alternate, alternate skybox if you want the lighting, but you want the image to be different. Uh, you have a few to view as well. You guys know what that is already. Um, so we're going to keep it at 90, which is pretty much the standard. And uh, you have your mapper type, which is the same thing you have up here. So we can change the type of mapper um, to different, you know, pass through gamma, sRGB. And we also have Reinhardt. So we're going to leave it at Asus. Um, and then we have our model settings. So. Let's say you actually want to use the editor and standalone because that is definitely a possibility. You don't even have to open the engine. You just want to edit materials, get them in, see what it looks like. You can actually run the editor from the uh, install folder 
uh, by itself and just, you know, create materials and edit them. By saying that, if you wanted to look at the model itself and how it's going to look with the lighting settings that you have set inside of the viewport, we change it here. So let's say I wanted to grab, um, let me go and grab a model real quick. And I'm going to grab this weapon here. As you can see, I imported the weapon. So now when I apply the mirror material uh, settings for my base color, my metallic and all that, you'll be able to see what the material actually looks like on that model. Under the lighting settings, you can see, um, under the lighting settings, you can also see kind of the same system as above, but it's preferred to lighting. So you can add different sky boxes uh, and you can save those. That way you have uh, a ton of options for your lighting setups. Especially if you want to test different lighting setups for your game, maybe you have a day and night cycle and you can actually put that those lighting settings inside of the material editor so you know how it's going to look before you get to gameplay scripting like that. And below that you have lights where you can add lights, edit the settings, sorry. Uh, we have intensity. If I wanted to, you know, bump it up, you can see that it's going to get brighter and kind of weird looking, but <laughs> let's bring that back down to one. All right. So that's our viewport settings. Um, you're going to probably be playing with this a lot and adjusting this to your, um, your needs. All right. Now that we have that, let's actually go ahead and change our model asset back to the shader ball because that's the header that the, all right, now that we went over our settings, let's go ahead and change our shader ball back to its original model. Because as you can see, we've actually changed the model under the shader ball option. So if you were to change this to say cone and back to shader ball, it's gonna be now set to whatever model that you put in there. Let's go ahead and change that back. I actually forgot what it was under, so I'm going to just search for it. There we go. All right. All right, so if you look to our right, we have our inspector, and this is where you're going to place all of your uh, texture maps to bring about the visual likeness that you're going for for your model. So for our base color, we're going to look for our diffuse map. So I'm going to close this down for our weapon, and I'm going to go into my texture folder. As you can see that I have several uh, texture maps uh, for a brick uh, I should say substance, but for brick material. So we're going to look for our diffuse. Hit OK. All right, and I'm going to look for our metallic. And that's going to be this one here. It's going to now show up with that material. All right, so we can rotate around and kind of see how the light affects it from different angles. Uh, we can also hold shift and move with our left mouse click to kind of rotate it around so we're getting that uh, even better uh, glance at the light affecting our model. All right, so let's go ahead and add our other maps. I'm going to actually close our performance monitor real quick. And we have our roughness next. So that's going to be our rough right here. All right, uh, we don't have any specular uh, maps. Uh, we do have a normal map that's going to Huh, it actually didn't load. Weird. All right, I had to get a different type of map. Hopefully it doesn't mess the model up too bad. But as you can see here, we have our model, our, our normal, sorry, here. Hit OK. There it goes. I actually have the normal map inside of the specular map for some reason. <laughs> but that is our model. Let's rotate around with the light to see if we can see a different angle for the lighting. OK. And again, you always can change to different ones. You guys prefer that. Um, so yeah, so let's see what we have next. We have our inclusion AO. I think I do have one of those uh, here, AO map. We don't have any specular cavity maps. We don't have any emissive maps. That'd be weird on the brick material. Let's see. I do have a displacement map. So let me go ahead and get that. It's here, here. So with all that put in there and we have our opacity mode, which is opaque, we're going to leave it that you have different options in case you need different texture map options inside of our inspector. Uh, you can adjust the UVs if you need to do that. We have irradiance. We have different, all different options. Now, keep in mind, uh, before we get back to our model, 
this is our standard PBR material. All right, and you kind of get that once you when you open it from the uh, material component. But if you open up the editor itself and you want to create one from scratch, you're going to have actually different options. So if you go to file and new, you're going to have this pop up window that gives you an option to create a new material to also name it. We have our standard PBR, which is what we're using now. You have another option or actually more options for things like skin. If you want to create your own reflection probe, sorry, we also have enhanced PBR. Um, so that's going to give you more options that relates to, I believe, hair and fur and a, a few more options that give you a little bit more of variety and more advanced technologies for materials. Keep in mind that those are more strenuous on your TPU and GPU or your GPU rather. But that's kind of the name of the game when it comes to creating high fidelity game. So just keep that in mind. So for instance, you might want to reserve enhanced PBR for characters and use things like default or standard PBRs for, you know, inanimate objects in your world type thing. All right, so let's get out of that. All right, so now that we have our material on our model, uh, as you can see, now we can check inside the real world. So if we make sure we save it so that it updates the material, and you will know that when this, I've already saved it beforehand, but whenever you save it, this will update to the actual material. Uh, before it's it was all black, non-textured, but now that we have it set, it should also show up in our viewport here. So if I get close, as you can see, we have our material, and this will look better, of course, on a wall of some sort. But yeah, you can even see our displacement here as well. Uh, so it's looking pretty nice, pretty nice. And my lighting isn't really set up. It's really defaulted to how it was in the world. So I haven't gone that far yet. Cause I'm going to do videos on that. But yeah, that is a very simple material guys. As you guys can see, we went over the editor. Uh, we figured out, you know, how to place texture maps in the inspector. Uh, we looked at some of our windows that we have access to like our performance monitor, our Python terminal. Uh, we have our viewport settings where we can change different things within the viewport. Also remember that you guys can also launch the material editor by itself. If you just want to do some look development and create materials on the fly without having to open up the engine as a whole um so i hope you guys enjoyed this video um if you guys have any questions or comments let me know down below so yeah but other than that hope you guys are having a very dope day hope you guys are prospering in your projects and until the next time always remember to keep developing